Hello. Hello. <laughs> so we are slowly going into silage season, hopefully, anyway. What's happened to your heart? Nothing. It's fine. <laughs> oh, darn. To be fair, I'm way too hot. And so one of the most important things about silage is the preparation. Obviously, there's a lot of machines involved and it's really important they're looked after. So in today's video, it's going to be a lot about our dad, which I will be very happy with. <laughs> well, it's not with. about me. It's, it's not about him. him. You don't <laughs> learn his personal life story. You might have no, bits. that is very true. You might get bits. Ooh, stay tuned for those. <laughs> I've been trying to steal my knife for a long time. Yeah. So we're going to learn all about sharpening the blades on the wagon. So the wagon is what brings the silage in for us. Okay. So yeah, so I am gonna leave now. Good. <laughs> and leave you all to it. Bye. Oh. Bye. Off she goes with her headphones. <laughs> Bye. She knows what she's so, doing. So as you can see, it's the Pottinger wagon. I think we've done a whole video on the wagon, okay? Done a whole video on it a while back. Yeah. Oh, we did a video on silage. So. But basically now we're going to Toro show you 5100. Toro 5100. Um, but yeah, you might notice it's looking nice and shiny and clean. So dad has been washing it over the last, well, he washed it yesterday. Um, but there's lots of preparation goes on before we go on silage with regards to the wagon and getting it all ready. So we're going to show you one of the things that we do before we go on silage. Yeah. Hello. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I didn't know you for me. Um, yeah, so we're going to go in here now. Uh, I've taken most of the blades already out from the machine, and I left two in for you to uh, see me taking them out, basically. So, um, most of the blades uh, have been in, well, all the blades have been in since we finished silage last autumn, and it was a really wet um, silage that we did. So, because of that, um, the blade's quite stiff to get out. You should have really taken them out before, but I haven't had a chance. So, what I do is I, I use this crowbar, I pull the spring back, and then I get a hand underneath, and I pull up the knife. I give it a few shakes like that, and the knife comes out like that. Uh -huh. So, I'll do this one again. So, I put the crowbar down. They're not that hard, but some of them, it's a bit easier with a crowbar. Get that up, but once I get it past there, oh, that one's nice and slack. Pull them out and then I bring them outside and I'll give them a shot then. And as you can see, Dad's wearing nice big protective gloves, which are more for the sharpening, but also actually really good for that because you you jammed your hands and things, then it's a lot more yeah, protective. Yeah, the, these are really sharp. So I always wear these gloves. They're a bit cumbersome, but they're welding gloves actually. But they are good because these blades are very, very sharp and you can easily cut your hands. So I'm going to sharpen all these manually now with a grinder. So all these blades are in that row there that you've just seen. Uh, the grass gets fed through them and it gets chopped smaller. So when the grass has been cut, it's quite long. It gets chopped down to a length of about that much. It's quite hard to do. <laughs> so it does vary, but it, it'll, some of it will be short like that. Some of it will be longer like that. But it's, uh, it's chopped much smaller, so we can get a lot more in the clamp. We can roll it a lot better and it's better for the cows to digest. So that's why we chop it. Um, yeah, because obviously we'll go into silage a lot more when we do it, but the mowers originally cut the grass, don't they? So the wagon is just making it that bit smaller, as yeah, Dad so said. The, the mowers just cut the grass and basically lay it flat for it to dry. Uh, it doesn't get chopped at all with the mowers. It can get conditioned, which means it gets beaten slightly and gets spread and uh, helps it to dry. This is the chopping uh, that's done on this type of system with this harvester. So it is important we keep these blades sharp. Um, we only take them out ourselves um, before we do the first cut of silage of the year, which is now. We sharpen them manually. After that, we sharpen them in the wagon. I can do a really good job in the wagon, but I always take them out for the first sharpen to give them a really good sharpen. And after that, I touch them up every day uh, when I'm on the silage, actually in the wagon. And I can show you how we do that later on. So just quickly then, this is where they'll line up. Obviously, you'll see more in depth when they go back in and things. And how many blades is it all together? Uh, <laughs> I think it's 36 or something. 
I'll tell you what, I'll tell you after, all right? Just after. Ask you something I don't know. <laughs> I thought you'd know. I think it's about six. I, I don't, I know. <laughs> about 40, but we'll get a definite answer by the time you finish. Is we, <laughs> um, we always put sunning blades in every year, here. Uh, I've got six there, and I've got a few spares in the tractor as well, because you can't break them when you hit the stones and things like that. So what I will do when I'm sharpening, any poor ones, so I've got two here I can show you. So, these aren't terrible, but that, well, that one is. So we didn't really factor in the amount of time it would take to open up this packet of blades. Yeah, and unfortunately, Josie <laughs> has taken my knife. And you know how fussy I am about my knife. Now we're using this silly and, little tool. Well, <laughs> Nice. So Josie, yeah, it's taken my knife, and again, not giving it back, but she, well, she lost it, oh, and now uh, well, she's found it again after trying to make out that she had given it back to me. <laughs> this is the sort of people I work with every day. It's best just to say you've given it back until you find it, and then it's like, oh no, I didn't have it. Yeah, that's exactly what she did. Oh, by the way, I found the knife. So that's a, a brand new blade, okay? It just happens the same blade. So that's an older one. Yeah, as you can tell, that one is in quite good condition, actually. Yeah, but you can see the wear, oh, yeah. it's even on that one. Okay, that's the wear. Gosh. Uh, that blade is, is very, very sharp. So because I'd like to think, after I've sharpened these, they'll all be close to that sharpness. And then the machine is much more efficient. It'll cut a lot quicker, I guess with the crop a lot faster. And the tractor will also use a lot less fuel. Um, because these are sharp. So every morning before we start the silage, I will sharpen these blades. Um, the new ones, I'll put in the middle, because in the middle of the pickup reel is where most of the grass comes through. And the older blades will go, the worst ones kind of go right on the outside and they get better as I come in. So, well, this one here, for instance, then, I just chucked them out. There's a lot of damage on the top there. It's been worn down quite a long way on the plate. And I can, you know, that could be all right for a spare if I was desperate. Really desperate. But it's not, uh, it's one I would probably put out because there's not really much edge there. Um, so, yeah, I try and change a few every year and it just works out cheaper doing it like that. Okay, so Dad's going to get on with the sharpening and I think I've got myself a job while you're doing that, have I? So Poppy is going to come in now. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, we're going to open this back to show you how it opens back. Uh, anyway, and then we can clean it all with the air gun. Um, just clean all here, so all the blades go back in. They're nice and free. Then we're going to spray it with oil, and then we'll replace all the new blades uh, and the ones we've sharpened. Nice. It's worth noting that, of course, the tractor is actually attached to the wagon, but everything's turned off. The key is out, because as you will have noticed, we've gone underneath the wagon quite a few times to get from one end to the other but there's absolutely no risk that anyone's going to be able to get in the tractor and drive off because um dad has got the key so unless he planned to murder me <laughs> okay, oh so harder <laughs> oh josie's not in this video will we <laughs> don't find my knife oh it's coming out of the pocket Oh my god. Right, back now, this side. So normally the blades would be in there. Poppy's going to clean all that area now and blow it all through and do a tidy job for me. Oh, I can't Offer. I'm not a nice dealer, actually. I found it for you. <laughs> James, you would have lost it. You lost it. <laughs> but I did find it. <laughs> you can't find something that you. Yeah, well, I, I never have. lost it. I actually knew it was there. I just no, you didn't, because you tried to say that uh, you'd given it back to me for which a week. I thought I had. I've given it back to your dad. I've given it back to your dad. <laughs> which I thought for a couple of days. At one. Dad. At one point, I was getting blamed. Dad was like, remember when we were with Jenny and I gave it to you and I was like, that never happened. Oh, and I got you mixed <laughs> up with him, <laughs> He was like, how many I'm not people being funny, but his knife is so stupid You're not funny, no, not a bit. His knife is so stupid and small. Is there any point in it anyway? Oh, um, hit well, for... Well, that's the last time you've ever had my knife. <laughs> I didn't want to have my own. Wait for it. <laughs> we're getting on well to you, right? Go away. Yeah. Oh, um, where is that? It? Um, it must be in my coat pocket. <laughs> that was embarrassing. Right, come on, you've got to do this one. 
So from there. So Dad's just teaching me what I need to be doing. You've got to work of it the grass out with the, this uh, little show bar or little prize bar it's called really. Yeah. And we go that on all the way and cross on all of them. Then we go around the back of them and we clean all across the back of them. Mm, back of these. Get all the dry muck out from everywhere and then blow it all off later. Okay, sounds good. So I'm going to sharpen this blade now. So this one is quite a quite a blunt one, really, but I'll, I'll sharpen him anyway because he might be good for a spare. Um, so it's only one side you sharpen these blades, okay? So you don't sharpen that side. That's got a rigid side on it. Well, they're all rigid, but you don't sharpen that side. You just sharpen this side, and you, you try and get it so it's a nice flat edge all the way up there. Well, so how do you know which edge to sharpen? Uh, because if you look at a new one, it's quite obvious. So on this side they got it's wrinkly. Oh yeah. And then on this side it's tapered like. You see the taper on that? Oh yeah, it's got like an edge to it. It's got an edge to it. So you sh you always sharpen from that edge. Right, so put the grinder to go, make sure you've got your glasses on so you've got something good in your eyes. That's got a nice sharp edge. Uh, that's quite a badly worn blade, but that will do absolutely fine. Uh, as I say, it's quite quite worn, so it's perhaps one I won't put back in, but it's always nice to have a sharpened blade, so if you do put it back in, you know it's sharp. And sometimes you can have a stony field um, if you're freshly reseeded, and you might break three or four blades, and you haven't got any new ones, so it's, it's always better to shove a few old ones in then. Um, and keep the new ones for the better grounder. So you just use a little handheld grinder there. Um, yeah, just a normal little grinder. With what? What? So that's got that a, a stone disc, disc for uh, um, sharpening metal. Yeah. Oh, nice, lovely. Well, you better get going because you've got a big pile there. So I'm going to pull this one out as you come along to him. As you're there, as you can see, it's got quite, quite a few dents in it. Oh yeah. So I'm going to pull that one out because I'm not quite that desperate yet. <laughs> Close, but not quite. So it's quite important perhaps just to show on this blade that it's a, a newish one probably went on last year. So I only had to touch up the edge. You can see there's a lot more wear left on the plate there. So that sharpened up really easy and as you can still see the paint on the top uh, there yeah. so that's a that's a quite a new blade so poppy has now got the worst of well me i don't know why i said poppy i have now got the worst of the muck well just dried grass basically out of all these little nooks and crannies so the plan now is to use the compressor, so it's just like an air compressor you pump up the tires with. Whoa. Ah! But it's got like a different end you can put on it. And it basically blows out air, which is quite handy. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> You're not meant to use it for that. Bit, but... It's basically just dried grass um, that's in there, so it's really easy just to blow it all away. It's just good to start a fresh then, nice clean surface, ready for the blades to go back into. Now you've sharpened all your blades. The question is, did you count them? No, but I did count. If you count them, it's the same thing. I counted 20 to there, so there must be about 40. <laughs> I thought it was 36, but I think it's more than that. Right, I'll count. Well, don't One, take all day counting. You want to see you do that. 
Yeah, I think it's 39, which is a bit random. It's about to be 39. I said it wasn't 40. Yeah. I thought it was 36. That's quite close. To, uh, my wife, Dawn, gets her sixes and her nines mixed up often. <laughs> so it's just probably her that said it was 36 to me when she meant 39. Oh dear, be flamed, ma'am. I said I can give some secrets away after <laughs> this job. Right, so now we've got yet another attachment onto our compressor. So that is oil, is it? Yeah, it's a thin oil. It's H32. It's just an oil that I've got a big barrel of, which I don't use for nothing else. So I, it's good in this situation because it's quite clean oil. It's nice and um, it doesn't look dirty when it's on the machine. Uh, it's thin and it goes through this uh, system nicely. So it's a, it's a thin oil. So as you can see, perhaps on the mower behind you, I gave that a thick spray one yesterday. Oh yeah, you can, well you can kind of see it's got that shine on it. Yeah, yeah there look. It just, just helps things not to rest uh, so much. Um, so what I'm gonna do is spray the back of those blade uh, holding mechanisms so it gets all suppled up and um, the blades should come out a bit easier next time then. Okay. So I'm just gonna go for it. Just gonna put a little bit across there as she's open. My father always said to me, oil is a marvellous thing. And I always say to the girls. Yeah. What is oil? A marvellous thing. <laughs> right, what are we going to do now is push this back in, because we're happy that this is all clean and tidy and ready to go. And then we're going to replace the blades. So you yeah. push this back in and... Oh. Now we put the pins back in. Yeah, so Dad was just saying we he makes sure this where that's just slotted in there, he just makes sure that is clean so it just slots in nice and easy basically. So I put a bit of grease on the pin because it always makes things easier next time you use it. So push that in there like that. Like that. There's two pins on the floor. Like that, and it tips over there. This will now go back on. Yeah, like that. So there you go, she's all back together. Now just put the blades back in. I always put them in that way, the pins. So the reason is, the machine travels in that direction. Grass can't pull that out, as if you put it that way grass or something could pull the pin out so yeah uh, so it would push rather than pull. So it's pushing rather than pulling yeah so we're gonna put the blades back in now so my job is gonna be just to scrape off any excess dirt off the blades with this little tool that we used to open them earlier simple as that and then dad's gonna put them back in so if you do one so here we go oh gloves on because this is a dangerous job they're sharp now, so you've got to be very Where careful. Where are those gloves? Oh, there they are. These gloves are... Winnie the Pooh gloves, they look like. Because he's yellow and red. <laughs> they are good gloves, to be fair. If you did accidentally nick yourself with a grinder, um, this is not going to stop grinding cutting through your hand, but it will certainly help if you just nicked... Instead of nicking your skin, you nick this glove, it would save your skin, so... Well, we're using something like that. So it's. So it's. I'm it assuming it's the opposite of taking it out. Yeah. So you pull that back, and then you put it down, and in she is. That one is as simple as that. And because we've cleaned everything up now, it's easier. So sometimes you need a hammer, sometimes you don't. So make sure it's in there like that. Sometimes, look, like, it'll just push the spring back on its own. As simple as that. So when I. I put all the blades in, this whole mechanism would pick these blades up and push them right into through that gap there. And inside there is where the grass comes up and that's what the grass would be pushed through these blades. Um, but when I pick the whole mechanism up, there's a, a lever on the bottom side, which will lock these so they won't do the spring in like they're doing now. 
Um, so um, if big lumps of grass are going to come in, they're not going to push the blades backwards. So this has been released purely for me to take the blades out. So we've hit the middle now, so we're putting in the snazzy new ones. New ones. So I'm putting the new ones in the middle, because as I said earlier, this is where the grass comes at the machine. As you can see how much easier they slot in as well. Well, I haven't said that, that one's a bit... <laughs> And um, some of the older ones are a bit tight is because the blades we had a wet cut of silage late in the year last year so it is a bit dirty and wet and um, it's a bit caked it's not normally too bad it's not too bad this year to be fair but I've got another one of these in so you see before you just put it in there turn it up like that push it right on and your thumb and put it down and in this pop there no bother that one nice going in. Oh, is it going to go? No, no. Oh, typical. There you go. So they're all in there. They're all looking What's really tidy. That? So there's the new ones you can see quite easily in the middle. And to be fair, all of these each side will have been the new ones of last year. And then these would have been the ones from the year before. So probably every three to four years. I mean, I've only put six in and there's uh, 39 blades. So it doesn't really add up that quickly, but <laughs> <laughs> it's probably more like six or seven years, but it depends. To be fair though, this one is obviously quite an old one and it looks Real pretty tiny. decent. Yeah. Like yeah. it's still got the rad there, which is what we're... Yeah, and it, the main thing is the blade. Yeah. But, um, you can see the, the new ones are black and they go black out of here and I know I put them on last year so I'm gonna put 10 on last year uh, so these would be older ones than that but I only change them when we need it and so I just buy six or so depending we might have a stony field this year if we do seed which we will do some seed this year all going well um, and very often then you pick up a few stones so I might end up changing more blades next year Just giving these a little coating of oil as well because they're obviously metal, so it would just help them to rust less as well. <laughs> right, I'm going to show you how this works on it. Oh, you oh, are going to no. have to wait. You could have been struggling to go to work. Quite a long time. So, this computer is the most annoying computer I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> it takes probably well we'll be like that for a while now yeah I, i'm not gonna expect you want to watch that because it's really boring but it takes about <laughs> five minutes it feels like half an hour to turn on so i usually remember to turn it on early uh, in the day before i actually need it which i forgot to do today Dear. um and it's also what we use the fertilizer spreader on as well so it's it's a bit annoying it also takes half an hour to turn off as well which I <laughs> don't understand that but anyway, there are, it's turning itself on, so I can start the tractor up in the meantime. Okay. Oh, we're live. So now if I press work, which is that button there, everything I want to do is on there. So it's showing me by there that the blades are down. So I could put them up from here, pressing that button, but I'm not going to do that because I want you to see it from outside. So you can oh, see the blades are folded up and going now, okay? Springs that we were moving to put them in is now locked. So if I open it up again, you will never move that. That is absolutely solid. So there's no giving them blades now. They are they're fixed. picking up silage 
the machine will tell me after two hours work to do that because what it does as these cones come through taking all the dead grass and all the sort of rubbish out of the way so i'll just do one slowly and that's um. pushing all the muck onto the floor and cleaning the blades so i can do that from inside so it just keeps the knives cleaner and they'll chop better general basics of what we do to prep the wagon might as well the wagon in it <laughs> um dad is gonna just spray a little bit more oil now on a bit of the outside of the machine just because he can really no just because he does anyway <laughs> that is the basics of our video hope you all enjoyed learn a little bit about the prep for the machine and hopefully now we'll see it in action over silage bye. see you next week bye